Hey everybody! In this month's My Monthly Hero Kit video, I am bringing you something a little bit different. I wanted to show you an art journal page that I created with this beautiful ocean themed kit. The kit has a very large image of a sea scene, and I thought that that would be perfect on this journal page that I created purposefully for this with a water themed background. And I will show you how I made the page after I show you my approach to coloring this large focal image. So this is a coral reef along with a few different kinds of shells and sea plants and all different kinds of fun stuff. I chose a few Copic markers that I thought would coordinate with the watercolor background that I chose. And the first step in coloring this image so that it blends into my journal page is to use a marker to fill in the edges around the image, so the white space left by the die cutting, as well as any openings to the coral or the sea life that would show through as water if you were viewing this image in my little underwater scene. So you'll see me sort of define the image. I stamped it in a very light colored ink and as I go around and fill in that water behind this image you will see the shape sort of emerge, which you couldn't really see in the stamp set. I don't have the index sheet for this main kit, so I know that was a little bit hard to see, but this reverse coloring technique is going to sort of work backwards to show you what is present in this scene, and that's kind of fun. It was fun to watch this back as I was editing the video because it sort of turned into a coral reef right before my eyes. Now the main thing that I wanted to keep in mind since I had already done the background of the journal page is just that I wanted the water to coordinate with the page so that it would look harmonious. But I also wanted very sharp complementary colors to really pop the focal point of the page. And so a coral reef, that was easy because it could be a coral color. <laughs> And that's definitely complementary to the blues and greens that I have on this page. But I also wanted, because this is such a large image, I wanted the coloring to go very quickly. So I'm just going to show you, I'm not an expert alcohol marker person by any means, but I just wanted to show you kind of a quick approach to coloring a large detailed image like this. So first I went around and I put a darker marker a darker orange marker, this is R09, around the edges of the coral to give it a little bit of shape. And also if there were any shading marks on the coral, I made sure and went over them with the darker marker. I'm not going to do a lot of blending. You're going to see how quickly this image gets colored. And that's because I'm going to do all the detailing with a colored pencil. The idea here with the alcohol markers is to get color all over the image very quickly. Now inside the coral image itself, with the lighter colors, I'm actually alternating a pink marker and a coral marker. And this gives a little bit of life to the coral reef. They're really not all one single color. The colors vary among different pieces of coral. And so I'm just hinting at that by really very crudely just coloring one pink and coloring one coral but in the end it all comes together and looks beautiful every now and then i just gut check it against the page and make sure i'm choosing the right colors same with the starfish i want that to be complementary and stand out a little bit so i chose kind of almost a greenish gold and then i'm putting the little dots for the starfish in there now with this little seagrass, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I saw a beautiful photograph of a grass that was similar to this that was like a violet color. So I'm using purple for the outline of each one of these grasses, which is very easy to do very quickly. And then the center or middle part of the grass will be blue. 
I will go back and shade this with a pencil as well, but with this quick coloring, you can see there's nothing finessed about this. It's simple outlining and coloring, and it goes really fast. I did notice I missed a few spots <laughs> that should have been the green of that background water, so you'll see me fill those in as well. The purple acts as a complementary against that kind of green tone that's all over the background, and that works really well as well. Now I just do one little section of this image at a time so that it's not kind of, you know, all the same. This allows me to sort of switch colors and put in little details here and there and make sure that I'm keeping the colors on track. So I'm repeating the pink and coral down here for these sort of fluffy little, I can't tell if these are plants or sea creatures. To me, it looks like little grasses but they have little fronds that kind of curl around the image. And so I'm repeating that coral color because there's a break between the coral in the reef with that purple plant, I can repeat that color down at the bottom and it's no big deal. Now I am using kind of a brown for the sand around all of these images and just trying to make sure no white space is showing there on what looks to be the ground. And then there are two little round objects that are really cute. They almost look like little donuts. <laughs> sea donuts. That's what they are. Sea donuts. I mean, an octopus probably wants a sea donut, if I'm guessing. And then there are these little mushroom-like structures. Somebody is probably laughing right now because they know exactly what this plant is. And I do not. But to me, I'm a really happy person in the kitchen and it looks like a delicious mushroom to me <laughs> so but it's a neat little structure up there that sort of is in harmony with the little sea donuts down on the sea floor <laughs> so I use some of the same colors there and then same with this gold color because it's broken up by the little sea grasses I can repeat that same color that was on the starfish now this is the only image I'm going to leave really light. This is kind of a bright spot in this coral reef. And so I'm just doing the details in very, very light tans and browns, and then just putting a very pale cream color over this, although I will be enhancing this with pencil as well. Now I won't force you to watch the entire pencil detail, but I only used two pencils, a brown and a purple, and I did 100% of the shading with this. And this is what makes it look like I know what I'm doing with alcohol markers when I don't, is just adding soft shading with a pencil really tones down those very quick coloring lines that I made when I was doing the alcohol markers. So I won't make you watch the whole thing, but adding pencil over alcohol marker makes a huge, huge difference in the way an image looks. And for me, it's an easier skill than coloring with alcohol marker. So you can kind of see where that's going and where it's getting dimension. And of course, you'll see the finished product in the end. But that looks great with my art journal page. It's exactly the little pop of color that I wanted. So I'll show you how I made it. I started with a layer of chalky gesso and I deliberately made some wave-like forms that you can see in the background with thicker areas of gesso, and I took a scraping tool and created little waves because I knew it was gonna be an undersea scene. These are Hero Arts liquid watercolors. I will list the supplies below and the particular colors, but I'm basically doing a mix of the blues and greens in the line over the top of this chalky gesso. I'm adding layers and layers of this watercolor on top of the gesso because that's what's going to give me a watery feel. There's literally no thought put into what goes where. It dries beautifully in this watery look. And then I have this gorgeous piece of, it's, I keep calling it tissue paper, but it's really more like a mulberry paper, a printed mulberry paper. And I got this on Etsy, so I'll link that below in the description. And I'm using my favorite little spatula, which is also in the list below, to apply matte medium. Now, I use two different kinds of matte medium when I'm art journaling, and it's highly dependent on what I'm doing at the time. 
In this case, I'm using a little thicker body matte medium because I find it's easier with these small pieces that I'm working with. And you do want to put matte medium both underneath the item that you're adhering and then on top of it as well. The great thing about this mulberry paper type thing is the layer that you put on top actually goes through to give you extra great adhesion. Now I loved these fish. I thought these were so beautiful. This is why I bought this paper. They're so pretty and they look like they're just floating through this beautiful background. So I'm adhering those. I made this journal in my handmade art journal class. You can still register for that class on my blog and I'll put a link to that below as well. So this is a completely lay flat journal that doesn't have a little crack in the center of the pages. It's all one piece of paper and these journals are so much fun. I've been having a blast in this art journal. So check out this class. It's very inexpensive and you will be addicted to making your own art journals with whatever kind of paper you want. Now I'm taking an art crayon, my black art crayon, and I'm rubbing it over some of these waveforms to make them stand out just a little bit more. It's one of my favorite parts of art journaling is just little textures in the background. I frequently just run my hands over my journal pages that have texture. That's part of the fun for me. And these crayons really help me highlight these little waveforms. Now my favorite part is splattering this page with the gold liquid watercolor. This is the shiniest gold. I can't get this with a pen. I can't get it with anything else. It's so amazing. So I will take my little, I have these little protectors that I use to protect the rest of the book while I'm working. And I tape them together at the top so they don't move on me. So I will carefully remove those and show you this amazing page. I love this page so much and I think you will too. Now I'm going to cut off that extra piece of tissue paper there before I'm done but here's what it looks like. Look at that shiny gold. Look at the waves in the background, the three-dimensional waves which I love and the little fish. That watercolor on top of the gesso just pools and bubbles and really gives you a beautiful watery look. I love this page so much. So much fun and so easy to put together. Here's a little peek at a previous page that I did. Art journaling is so much fun and I hope that you try it at some point. Here's the finished page and I want you to notice a couple of extra things that I did here. I took the same black art crayon and I gave a good drop shadow to the fish so the fish look completely different than they did when I was working that page I think they stand out a little bit more I used that same crayon to go around the little mandala element on the right hand side and give that some dimension and then I used the sentiment from the kit and I used my circle infinity dies I watercolored that circle. I rimmed it with the gold watercolor, stamped the sentiment, put it on the page, and then used the art crayon to give that a drop shadow as well. And then here you can see the more detailed coloring that I did with a pencil on top of that alcohol marker in the focal image. So grab your kit. They are while supplies last. And head over to my blog for more information on a giveaway and lots of other fun projects with this month's release. Thanks so much for watching.